Everybody, welcome to Creative Bug. We're coming at you live like we always do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Today I'm gonna to show you a really easy and quick way to decoupage. This is excellent for home decor or if you wanna make an heirloom hanger, which is what I'm gonna show you. We'll be using some matte Mod Podge. This is my favorite uh, type of Mod Podge to use. I prefer a matte finish, but you could totally do this technique with a gloss or even a high gloss. I think they might even have some glitter finishes, so you can play around with the type of Mod Podge that you like to use. You'll also need a wooden hanger. You need something that's porous. So I wouldn't recommend anything that's been painted or is already really glossy. The best way to use this technique is with something that is not already finished. You'll need some tissue paper or some decoupage papers. So I actually, Leanna was just in here and she's like, I didn't even know they made decoupage papers. So I've got these fun little packs of decoupage papers. Something with a small print, uh, an overall print works really nicely. Something like this stamp would work really well. We are going to be tearing and realigning all this paper. So uh, you wouldn't want anything that's like too specific. Like a map would work fine if you don't care if it's an abstract map, but if you're looking for a particular route on a map, that's not gonna work. So think about that when you're picking your paper. And remember, because we're live, you can always write in and ask us questions. I love your questions. Maybe you've done a decoupage project that you've really enjoyed. So I have some of my decoupage papers here. They come just like tissue paper. It's very similar to tissue paper. And you can use a tissue paper if you prefer. It's just really about what pattern you like. And I've torn it up into little bits, something around the size of a postage stamp. It's fine, it's not, doesn't need to be perfect. You don't want it to be perfect, and I wouldn't recommend cutting it. Uh, the tearing allows for a deckled, irregular edge, and that's actually gonna lay much flatter when you go to do your decoupage. I've poured out a little bit of my matte Mod Podge into this little container, and I have a flat brush, but you can also use a foam brush if you prefer. And then you really just dive in. The key to um, Mod Podging something, the key to collaging or decoupage something, is putting a coat of Mod Podge down as a glue and then putting a coat as um, a sealant on top. So it's kind of that combo push-pull back and forth of uh, glue on the bottom and then sealant on the top. And that's the awesome thing about Mod Podge is because it acts as both. We'll start here. I picked up this hanger for less than $2 in a five pack at um, my local home goods store. Actually went to the container store. But maybe it's time to refresh some hangers you have at home. I think this project would actually be really nice for something, like I said, like an heirloom piece. Maybe you knit a really sweet uh, baby sweater or a sweater for an adult even, and you wanna give it on a hanger that you've made also. This would be really nice for a bridal or bridesmaid hanger or a groom's hanger. Just something to customize. I'm just using the torn pieces of my decoupage paper. And I'm gonna to start to go over an edge and I wanted to see what I wanted you to see what this looks like. So I've got a little bit of my Mod Podge down. I'm gonna brush a little bit more. And you're gonna get sticky fingers because actually the best tool other than your brush are your hands, especially for getting in tiny spaces. So as I wrap over this edge, I wanna make sure that the Mod Podge is down. I'm just gonna use my hand, add a little bit more glue. And just try to make sure that there aren't any bubbles or ripples. And that's where my finger comes in handy. And this process is not difficult, it's more about patience. Remember, if you have questions, feel free to write in. Maybe you have a decoupaging story that you wanna share, feel free. And right now everything looks glossy, that's because it's wet, but I'm using the matte Mod Podge. So as it dries, it will become matte. Hi, Brianne. Brianne is wondering what type of paper can you use? Brianne's asking what paper I'm using or what type of paper can I use. Um, I love these decoupage papers because they come in a lot of prints, so that's a great first place to start. Tissue paper will work well. Um, I'll show you one that I did with some transparent tissue paper that has some gold flecks, which is really nice. You can also use paper napkins. My mom um, actually runs a party supply store and she loves to make little displays and things, and she's often using her paper napkins uh, to make 
things with decoupage. And if you are gonna use a paper napkin, that's like the kind that you buy in the um, paper supply department, you would just wanna tear away or peel away the top layer that has the decoration on it. And don't worry about the second and third layers that are blank and are just for absorption. Good question, Brianne. Okay, next question comes from Crafty Sandy. Hi, Crafty Sandy. And she wants to know, is Mod, is Mod Podge basically glue? Uh, Crafty Sandy is asking, is Mod Podge basically glue? It is, but it's also a sealant. It has less water than something like an Elmer's glue. Um, so if you were to do a collage or decoupage with something like Elmer's glue, you would get some results, I mean, that would work, but because of the water content, you would get much more bubbling and peeling and more texture. Um, so I would really recommend using something like a Mod Podge. It's, this is what it's designed for, so it works really well. It's hardworking, it's, it's been around for a long, long time. Um, in fact, if I had John from Plaid here, he could tell me exactly how long. I know that Plaid just had an anniversary, and I think Mod Podge, something like 50 years or something. I'm not sure. We'll have to check on those facts. Next question. Pamela is asking, can this be done with thin fabric? Pamela's asking, could you do this technique with thin fabric? That's an excellent question, and I believe the answer is yes. Uh, I have done some similar type of things weaving with fabric and then putting a coat on top so that I could paint on top of it. This is going way back in my history now. We're talking about like high school. Um, I cut up some canvas, wove some African fabric into it, and then put a coat, like a coating of this, and then I could put acrylic paint on top. So it's basically I was making like a canvas base for my painting. And yeah, I think you could. You might get more rippling and bubbling. The nice thing about the paper, and I've been talking while I've been doing this, but as I go over edges and corners and try to fit the paper into something small, it behaves well. It kind of uh, folds over those curves and those corners. Fabric is gonna work a little bit differently, although you can kind of uh, pinch and pull it and it has a little bit more stretch. It may not lie as flat in some of those more difficult areas. So you just have to play with that. If you're having uh, trouble getting into like a little nook and cranny, then make your piece even smaller. If you're working with really large strips, you're not gonna get as smooth and clean a result. The idea is that you're getting lots of little tiny strips or little pieces that you're overlapping as you go to create this really pretty like collage effect. These are really good questions, you guys. Thank you for... The questions are piling up. Were you going to explain something? Do you want me to... No. Jessica, I have, a, I have a great response for that. The question is, can you use Mod Podge over a picture like to attach an image to wood? And the answer is, yes you could, but instead you should do an image transfer, which is one of my tried and true and favorite techniques and a class that you can watch on Creative Bug. It's what I wrote my first book on. Um, and instead of dealing with air bubbles and making sure everything is lying flat, uh, especially because to get a really clean photo, you usually need something like photo paper, and because of the stiffness of that, you're more likely to trap in air bubbles, et cetera. Instead, you should do an image transfer. So I would recommend doing an acrylic image transfer. Um, also, like a gel medium image transfer. Gel medium is similar to Mod Podge. I do prefer my gel medium in that particular case, although if you go on Plaid's website, I think they might have a tutorial for an image transfer using Mod Podge as well. So um, you could do that, but I think an image transfer would give you even more successful results. This is really the thing that is great for collage and decoupage because it is thin, it does lie flat, it comes in a lot of different finishes, like I said, matte, gloss, etc. And so it works really nicely for home decor. This would be super pretty like on the cover, uh, sorry, on the front of a drawer, for example. We have these great classes by Barb Blair and she um, kind of does this technique with wallpaper. It's like a similar concept where you could pattern the front of a drawer on like a hutch or something. That would really be really fun. You could do this heirloom hanger technique. In fact, the first decoupage project that I remember doing, I was in high school and um, I started my book collection early, so I had too many books and not enough room, and I put this shelf over my closet, and it was just a piece of plywood from the hardware store, and I mod-podged all these illustrations from where the wild things are all over it. So I 
decoupage would be the better term for that, and just cut up a copy of Where the Wild Things Are, a Maury Sendak book. If you don't already know it, you should. Um, and I just Mod Podged it right onto there. And that thing lasted all the way through college. I think I put it into a garage sale after college. It does last a really long time, too. So if you guys were curious about the heirloom quality of this, this will get you onto the next several generations. And you've probably noticed that this is easy to do while talking. It's just the same concept. We're overlapping small torn pieces of decoupage paper or tissue paper or like, um, I think Brianne asked me earlier what kind of paper I can also use a decorative paper napkin. And I just continue until I cover the whole thing. Remember I said, if you get into small nooks and crannies that are difficult, just let's look at this one actually and I can show you. Make sure that you have that layer of Mod Podge before and after each piece. Just go with smaller pieces. And I actually, let's say I had a piece that fit exactly here and it ended right at this edge. I actually don't like to do that because if you have paper ending right on this edge and paper ending right on this edge, you're much more likely to get a gap. I like to go over all of those edges with a single piece of paper. And like I said, your hands are your second best tool, maybe your first best tool. The brush is just helping me keep my hands a little bit cleaner. And I'm just using a flat brush, but you could also use something like a foam brush. So there I have that little tiny scrap. I'm just finding a piece that could kind of nestle in there, making sure that I have enough Mod Podge on this back end. And then this is where I'm gonna use my fingers just to kind of manipulate it, lay it into place, and then make sure that I have a nice coat of Mod Podge on the top like that. And like I said, as it dries, it will become matte because I'm using the matte Mod Podge. Here's one that I started earlier. You can see, let's give you a nice look here. So that's while it's wet and this is after it's dry and you can see how clean and seamless that is. It's a nice matte finish. It's so pretty. I mean, this is like something I would see on Anthropology's wedding website, Beholden. It's so beautiful, but I can make it myself. And um, I think that makes it extra special. So if you're the mother of the bride or you have a friend getting married, this would be a really nice thing for the wedding dress. Uh, it could be something for, like I said, a baby garment. Here's one that I completely finished. Let's just move this out of the way so you guys can see. So this was using tissue paper. And I knew that the white of the tissue paper would become slightly translucent, which I really liked. I was concerned that the gold metal, uh, sorry, the silver metallic would be obscured by the Mod Podge, but I was super happy that it wasn't. So even though we put a top coat with every single piece, you still get that awesome reflectivity. And then I just used some uh, acrylic paint to paint this bottom bar. Yes, if you're just joining us, welcome. I'm using some matte Mod Podge along with decoupage papers. Uh, some of you may not realize that these exist. Check them out at your local Joanne. Uh, pick something that has an overall pattern that you don't mind tearing up and reassembling. If you are very particular about where your butterflies lie, then maybe this isn't the best choice, but something like this will work really well when it's torn into tiny pieces and then reapplied. Now you can tell that not every single piece of this flower is lining up perfectly, but it makes a really beautiful all over print and that's totally fine. And the technique, I'll show you one more time. If you don't wanna see me glue 100 pieces of little tiny paper to this. Got my little matte Mod Podge here. You wanna make sure that you do a coat to start with. Take a torn scrap of paper, lay it down, and then you wanna make sure that you're just covering it back up with Mod Podge because it is both the glue and the sealant. And you just work your way along the entire hanger and let it dry. Luckily, this does dry pretty quickly, so you can complete one of these in, let's say, a half hour. Um, depending on how meticulous you are, maybe you can go even faster than that. If you're having any tricky parts that are really small or really sharp edges, just go with smaller bits of paper. And I wanted to thank you for joining us live like you always do. Do we have any other questions? I think we have a lot of questions, actually. You guys have been really great with your questions today. We have a lot of questions. I didn't want, I didn't want to cut you off on your important instruction. Um, Mandy is, I'll just keep gluing. Uh, Hi, Mandy. Perfect. So Mandy um, says, I have some old Mod Podge that has bubbles in it. When I pour some out for a larger project, do you have to pop the bubbles, or will they mm. pop when they dry? Do you have to shake up Mod Podge before using it? 
That was a lengthy question. Hopefully I'll repeat that uh, appropriately. It sounds like Mandy has some older Mod Podge that's sitting in the back of her craft closet. She's poured it out and has bubbles in it. She wants to know, does she need to pop the bubbles before she uses it or while applying? And you know, that sounds like a product question. So I'm not an expert on the chemical components of Mod Podge, but I would say in my best guess, um, it might be time to replace your Mod Podge. But also, you'd probably wanna take the bubbles out. Um, it sounds like it might be thicker than usual. I would not add water to this because you may change the chemical component and it may not allow your heirloom hanger to last as long. So you may just wanna reinvest in some new Mod Podge. Um, the bubbles, you definitely want to get out before. They, well, I don't think they'll dry in there necessarily, but if you are having some thickening issues, then um, you could get some weird bumps and lumps and air bubbles. Next question comes from DV. And Hi, DV. She's asking, after time, would the decoupage come off? After time, does the decoupage come off? The answer is no, not if you did a really good job. Uh, the Mod Podge is water-based, but as it dries, just like an, any other acrylic paint or um, glue or adhesive or medium, it does become sort of plastic and it will be water resistant. So you could dust this lightly with like a, a wet cloth after it's all dry. If you had like a little corner, let's say you made this for your five-year-old grandson who's pulling his backpack and coat off of it every day, you may get some things pulling up in which case you could just go back in with your Mod Podge and glue them back down. You do want to make sure that whatever you're working with um, is already, you know, dust free. If you are pulling an old hanger out of your closet. So Mandy and Janice have questions about paper. Janice is wondering, can you use other paper besides decoupage? And Mandy wants to know, can you use regular craft paper or does it have to be thin like tissue paper or napkin? Right, good questions about uh, paper, what kind of paper, and I've answered this a couple of times, so if you're just joining us, this is the great thing about live because you can write in and ask questions. I am using decoupage papers, which are somewhat thin. Um, you can also use tissue paper, and I think our CCAM is not on, FYI. Um, so hopefully you guys can see what I'm looking at here, but you can use thin papers, like a decoupage paper, you can use tissue paper. You can also use a decorative paper napkin and you would just peel away the top layer and remove the bottom layers. In a paper cocktail napkin, the top is printed and the second and third layers are just absorption. They don't have any pattern on them, so you wouldn't use that. If you go something thick, you're gonna have a hard time manipulating your paper around curves and in little crevices. Cardstock is a definite no-no. But if you had something else, like an old sheet of gift wrap that you really liked, you can play with it. The thinner the paper, the easier it is to manipulate uh, with the Mod Podge and around your surface. Yeah. Good questions, you guys. Just keep working on this. So the, like I said, this process is the same. You just move around until you've covered your entire hanger. And you wanna make sure to get a layer of the Mod Podge below and on top, because like I said, it works both as a glue and as a sealant. Now, um, remember we do this Tuesdays and Thursdays live every Every week we do this, and um, I wanted to tell you guys, it's actually gonna be really exciting. We're moving our Creative Bug offices, which we're all really excited about. So in a few weeks, you'll have a brand new set, a brand new space that we'll be playing with and experimenting in. And while we're doing that, I'm also gonna be at the Plaid offices on October 3rd, and we're gonna come live from Plaid. We're gonna be doing a one hour painting party, which is something that Plaid does in their offices um, monthly. I'll be joined by many craft bloggers in the Atlanta area, and I'll be showing you how to make and paint from scratch a modern floral on a wooden canvas. So join me for that, that'll be on October 3rd. Maybe you can write in with some of your plaid questions because I'll have the whole staff there ready to help us answer anything technical about air bubbles or how long your Mod Podge might last. Thank you for being so engaged today and asking so many great questions. You can always ask questions on our live shoots and afterward you can watch this on our CBTV. We'll see you next time.